Good afternoon everyone and welcome to the latest edition of The People's Portfolio. Okay, now again guys, you did not disappoint. We've got some amazing uh, prospects to talk through today and we'll make a selection to add into the portfolio. Um, if you're new around here guys, you like the channel, all that kind of stuff, like, share, subscribe, retweet, all that good stuff. It really means a lot to me guys, especially when I see the subscriber count growing in the comments, how positive they are about what we're doing on the channel. It means, honestly, it means the world to me. Thanks very much for your continued support. Okay, now the footy, on a little footnote, well, hey, is, uh, is rising, is rising, is rising, is rising every day. It's good growth, which is great to see. So, uh, we're going into slideshow format like we did last week, so let's just dive right into it, guys, okay? Now, the first prospect we've got our hands on today is a boy by the name of Jonathan Silva, right? Great first name. Um, now, I didn't really know anything about this guy, um, but the comment that came along with him said that he's likely to have two transfers this summer, okay? Which did pique my attention, and I did keep a bit of an eye on him throughout the week. Um, and we did miss a bit of a price on him. He did move up in price over the last week. Um, so had we done it a little bit sooner, we might have picked this guy up earlier. Just the way the people's portfolio is going to be structured, though. I'm keeping it quite regimented with the structure we've laid out, okay? So, um, as you can see there, he's uh, mid-twenties, Argentinian left-back at Leganes, okay? Now, for Leganes this year in, in La Liga, he has amassed 30 starts, an average rating of 6.9 for a mid-league table. Is not um, a mid-table mid team. There we go, if I can say that. Isn't a bad haul at all for an average rating of 6.9. Three goals and six assists is very credible for a left back in today's world. Um, when you consider Trent Alexander Arnold, who is the, in my opinion, as it stands right now, probably the best right back in the world, I think he got 12 assists or 14. So for this guy to be at a lesser league, uh, a much worse team and get six assists. I think that's a nice little barometer there. Tackles per game is nice and high, 1.7, and the rest of the stats are relatively low um, for an attacking fullback, okay? But they're high enough to, to give the guy some room for improvement, okay? Um, now, when we did search out for the transfer stuff, the only thing I could make heads or tails of, all these um, uh, articles that you'll find, none of them really link him to another transfer it was as far as i can gather because it was google translate and french and portuguese and spanish websites he was on loan to leganes from sporting lisbon and leganes have now made the transfer permanent so it means he will be in the qualifying league of la liga next year so the other person the, the person who commented on the video i think they are maybe under the impression that leganes are trying to do a frankfurt what they've done with Jovic, just make the loan a permanent transfer, then look to sell them on. I couldn't see any links anywhere, guys, to be honest. Um, and I had a lot to look through for today. So again, I only went through the first two or three pages and most of them were like foreign, like Spanish, and, and I tried to go in as many of them as I could and translate them, but there was no, oh, he's been linked to Atletico Madrid or oh, he's been linked to Leon or he's been linked to Bournemouth or couldn't really see anything like that. But like the transfer window, guys, just because all the hype is going around certain people, doesn't mean that they're the only transfers that could possibly happen. This guy could just, you could wake up tomorrow and he signs for Leicester. You know, it, anything could happen, really. Um, the next guy we come on to is one who we are familiar with on the channel, and that is Maxi Gomez. Um, now, we spoke about him before in the Renford, no, no, not Renford, uh, making money from relegation. Certainly Vigo just scaved off relegation. This guy played a big, big part in that. So he's a Uruguayan forward. He's been linked to all the Premier League top brass, really. Arsenal, Liverpool, and then you get teams like West Ham and whatnot, Wolves sniffing about him also, as well as I think maybe Atletico Madrid. But at one, £1. twenty-six, he offers some amazing potential. Uh, if you look at him in the league last year, 33 starts, 13 goals and 5 assists. Bearing in mind this was a team that finished 4th bottom and spent a long portion of the season in the relegation zone. Um, so this guy's got a fair amount and you can see he made a few World Cup appearances and whatever as well if we look into the news it's basically all the teams I just told you about Valencia are there as well Tottenham Liverpool West Ham some good links going about for him and uh, if you look back to his price you know he's been on a nice increase and then he's had we were talking about double dipping throughout the week, but this guy's had a double plateau almost you know they get to a point and they chill out they take a spike so if you look um, from the 4th of March to the 9th of April been a little bit of a nice rise from the late 90s to the early one pounds and then from that early april point 
up to the end of April. It's had a big shoot up towards the £1.15 mark or so. It's calmed down, went back closer to the 112 mark, had a big pop up towards 128, and then he's dipping back down and kind of plateauing out at 126, 125. Okay, so he's in a nice position price wise now, and he's definitely got a lot of credible links floating about. Okay, the next guy we come on to again, he's no stranger to the channel, and that is Hervin Lozano. Okay, now Lozano's price, as you can see there in that three month graph, around where you see it saying the 16th of May took a bit of a dip he went off injured at the end of the season okay so that was something for me personally I thought that might go against him now the thing with Lozano and as you guys know I'm a fan of SMS as well Sergei Milankovic Savage is these guys were linked to transfers last summer had a good World Cup and then stayed at their club and historically throughout my time as being a football fan you find that happens with some players where they have a good World Cup and then for whatever reason they don't move but you will find inevitably they will probably transfer the following summer and um Somebody who springs to mind like that is Antonio Valencia. I forget what World Cup it was, but he did great for Ecuador. He got a move to Wigan from Villarreal, I want to say, off the back of that. Did well for Wigan and then Man United went and picked him up, you know. So you have things like this in football that are recurring trends, you know, and that's just from my memory. You might have a memory, something similar of a different player. And if you do, feel free to leave it in the comment section below. I look forward to reading that. So Lozano definitely has... Um, definitely has um, the, the scope to move this summer there's no two ways about it he's very talented and he's been linked to a good plethora of clubs and again it's in a in the DVZ 30 starts 17 goals 8 assists and when we looked at him before he plays right he plays left he can play anywhere wide you know he's really talented shots per game tackles dribbles all incredibly high and then if you look at the World Cup you know Mexico had a good turn they did well against uh, Germany in their group and they had a good run but unfortunate to go out I think it was to Sweden in the end if memory serves me right um, I might be tripping on that one but yeah four starts one goal one assist shots per game mega high tackles and dribbles mega high as well and he had a decent performance in the Champions League six starts two goals one assist and then you can just see the bottom of the screen shot, shots per game again is over three so this shows you no matter what standard the guy's playing at Champions League World Cup domestic he's getting away a lot of shots per game the guy is he shoots he shoots he shoots you know so if he moves to a qualifying league this is a guy who you could expect has a potential to regularly capture dividends if i can say that and then when we google him and we have a look about it's wolves liverpool man united great teams for him to be linked to okay the next one we come on to is a name i recognize but i didn't know much about and that was matteo politano okay who is a wide midfielder for inter milan and you can see he's had a lovely groove here there's a great opportunity to buy if you're a supporter of this guy down at the 45 pence mark um shot up to about 56 pence dipped back down at about 52 and you see now he's hovering around the 61 pence mark okay <coughs> sorry my battery's running a bit low guys um my car just turned on to get some battery. I'm just going to make sure the radio doesn't interrupt us. But when I actually dug a bit deeper on this guy, I was really surprised to see how often he's played. Inter Milan, 31 starts, 5 off the bench, 5 goals, uh, 6 assists. I've got a crack in my screen, sorry, so I had to do that to be able to see it. Um, over 2 shots a game. In, in Serie A, dribbles per game is nice and high for a winger. And in the Champions League, you know, he did well enough. You know, five starts, one assist, shots per game is high enough. And uh, did we catch the bottom of it? No, we didn't. But again, when we look at it, it's not really about transfers. It's, we're maybe looking at this guy more for performing even better next season under Antonio Conte. Um, and it's just talking about how he's doing really well and he's getting an Italy team. And the guy's definitely a prospect for the future. There's no two ways about that on current evidence. Um, and again, yeah, Inter insert Politano into deal at San Chiesa, so he might leave for Chiesa. Him going to Fiorentina doesn't necessarily harm his chances for IPDs or a potential bigger transfer down the road. I'll phone Mr. Rubbish back later on. Um, <laughs> as we know, Fiorentina have had guys like Quadrado and Salah leave for big money and do big things. So, and if Chiesa goes to Milan, he'll follow that as well. So, Politano could easily jump into that mode as well. Um, so, it depends on your strategy for buying this guy, but it definitely presents a lot of positives. The next guy we come to, I did not know anything about. This guy's called Thomas Edwards. He is a defender at Stoke. He is 20 years of age. He's 28 pence. And by all accounts, he's decent, you know. Um, Stoke didn't have a great year in the Championship. They did expect to get promoted first time of asking. But a lot of managerial changes and a bit of rigmarole. Um, they didn't quite pull it off. The stats are good. Playing well enough for a 20-year-old who's English, which is nice. And this is somebody you could see ending up at... 
Premier League as it stands now, he could end up at a Brighton or a Bournemouth or, you know, um, you could see him going to a team like that, certainly. Um, if a transfer was to go through this summer or next summer who, or even in January, who knows. But yeah, nothing remarkable from what I can see. If you're a Stoke fan and you want to tell me more about him, by all means, go ahead. But for his price, 28 pence, a decent enough gamble, I would say, for you know tackles per game in the Championship, which is a very competitive league, is a nice number there, certainly. And then this is all the articles when I searched them right now. I thought, oh, this guy must be a free agent because everything's about free agents in the summer um, and he's not on the free agents list. So if that's not correct, again, let me know. But he doesn't actually appear to be a free agent. So I don't know why he's coming up in all these searches, but there was nothing other than this. Not he's playing amazing or, you know, not, it was just nothing that came back. Okay. Now, this is the dark horse that I recommended to his Jack Stevens, 18 pence. That is, you do not need to blink. You do not need glasses. That is his three month graph. He has had virtually no movement on him whatsoever. Very stable, very solid position. He played 19 times, five times off the bench for Southampton. Uh, stats are okay, scored a goal. He's 25. And uh, when you look at him, it's just, yeah, he's doing well. Players to keep an eye on. And then you can see at the top there, Southampton fans react to the display. Jack Stevens against Huddersfield. So he's done pretty well for them in the past. And then that's just from WhatsApps and whatever as well. Okay, guys. So that is the people's portfolio for this week. They are the candidates, okay? Now, like I always do, I look at the real world of football over the weekend. And I think to myself, how much would I be gambling if I was not on the index and I was putting on accumulators? And with international football qualifiers, the Nations League final, over the full weekend, if I put any more, any more on than £20, I would be very surprised. So I've put £20 in with 45 pence hanging over. And we are going to make a purchase of Maxi Gomez, okay? Now, the reason we're going for Maxi Gomez is really just because his price is in a really nice little position right now. It's moving a little bit backwards. It's on a little bit of a plateau. It's a very safe position. And if any of those potential transfers do come off, um, then he's liable for a nice percentage increase on that, especially if it is to the Premier League. So we've added Maxi Gomez into the people's portfolio. If you weren't keeping up with the tweets midweek, we sold off a few bits and pieces, Mendy, Mount... People like this, Juan Bissaka, have consolidated them into Declan Rice, uh, who is continuing to go backwards, so we're maybe looking at top up in him as well. Uh, him and Sancho are safe core. They've went backwards because England have went out of the Nations League. There's not really much we can do about that, really, at this point. We're happy to hold them. We're sure their price will recover over the medium term to long term. You know, they're talented players and they'll do what they're meant to do. Okay, guys, but that's how the people's portfolio is sitting. This must be week three for the, the people to give their votes and get their, their players in. Camarasa is doing well. He has been up at 57, 56 pence. Pretty attractive position. And Remy Odin has had a nice gradual increase since we bought him last week, okay? So we look forward to seeing Maxi Gomez this week, what he gets up to and how he progresses, guys. I need these suggestions to keep coming, guys. There's an ambulance going past me. Hope everything's okay. Um, but please leave your comments down below, guys. The suggestions for next week, get them down there. I look very much to get stuck into them next Friday. Um, I'll say it again, guys. If you like the content, please like, share, subscribe, retweet, all that good stuff. It means so, so much to me. You've got no idea, guys. Have a great weekend. I hope your portfolio's smashing it up. Take care, and I'll catch you on the next one. Ta-da.